I'm going to ask you this morning to take your Bible, take your copy of God's Word, and turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Um, we're going to go to the book of Proverbs, and also I think i got a place in uh, Timothy, 1 Timothy, that we're going to be looking at. Um, you know I've been doing some messages uncovering the darkness. I've been spending quite a few of uh, my opportunities to preach, uh, and I've been, I, I'm still stuck on Satan, but uh, I, I was going there, and I started looking, and then uh, Tina reminded me, Mike, it's Father's Day. Uh, you don't need to preach about the devil, you know, on Father's Day. Um, do something else. And so I began to look at the beginning of the chapter where I, I've been in Ephesians chapter 6 verse uh, 10 through 12 is where I've been focusing the series of messages on. But this is going to be in chapter 6 verse 1 through 4. Um, I, 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 want, I want you to stay with me on this too and to listen to me for um, I've got something for everyone, for the children, for the young people, for the older people, for our message this morning. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6 beginning in verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that you may live long on the earth. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but you bring them up in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. Did you notice that? Verse 2, honor thy father and thy mother. I noticed something to begin with right here when I read that. There's no time limit on that commandment. Did you notice it? And there's no age limit on that commandment. It just literally says to honor thy father and thy mother. Why did God give us this command? This is the fifth of the Ten Commandments, to honor thy father and thy mother. Why did he give us this command? I believe that God knows that when the family unit breaks down, society breaks down. And then the country breaks down. And I'm telling you, whether you have got your head in the sand, it's happening around us right now. Respect for authority always begins at home. And this is a critical lesson that every child must learn. There are three areas of authority in our life. There is the home, there is the church, which is God, and there is government. And each one of these areas of our life plays a role in how orderly that society is going to function. I had a, I had a dear friend, an evangelist. Uh, he was a big man. He was a bouncer in a nightclub before he met Jesus as his savior. And uh, he would tell me about his mom. His mom was, mean. Uh, she was mean. She was a big mama. And he said that she would wear him out, and when, especially when he was young. And he always was getting into stuff. And he says, I recall a time when I did something wrong. And he said, she just literally took me to the woodshed. She didn't wait for daddy. And he said, I remember telling her that I'm going to call DHS on you. Said his big mama just walked out of the living room and went into the kitchen. She came back and had a phone book. And she handed it to him. And he said, well, what's this for? She says, I'm going to give you this so you can look up the number and I'm going in there and pack your clothes. Because you're out of here. You see, some may say, when it comes to this passage of scripture, 
to honor thy father and thy mother, that I had parents who were not worthy of honor. Some of them may have checked out on you. Some of them may have been abusive to you. Some have maybe been neglective to you that they don't deserve honor. And they may think, what's God telling me to do? Just ignore the pain that I had as a child to put on a happy face and pretend that nothing ever happened in my childhood? No, he's not. And you're not supposed to put on a happy face. But God is saying, I want you, if you cannot honor the person, I want you to honor the position of parenthood. I look back in my life and as far as I can recall, I had a pretty good childhood. It was tough at times, but I'm going to tell you, I made it tough too. I was a little bit on the hard-headed side and didn't want to listen all the time. And I brought a whole lot of wrath upon myself. But as I look at it, I thank God for my parents. But I want to stand up to tell you right now, they were not perfect. The only parent that I know is perfect is God himself, and that's the only parent. All the rest of us, we have weaknesses, we have faults, we have inconsistencies, and we make mistakes in our life, even the best. But there is a scripture passage that, uh, that attends to every one of us. For I have all, uh, we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that includes me and that also includes you. But I'm going to recommend to you something. When I'm telling you that God wants us to honor parents, our parenthood, I don't know, the, the day may come that you may have to stand before a judge. I hope you don't. But if you stand before a judge, I, should, I suggest that if you speak to him or if you're asked to speak to him, that you refer to him as your honor. Now, when you say that, you're not making a judgment of his character because he may have character and he may not have character. But you are saying it to show respect for his position or her position that she has. Parents have been given this position as parents in the early age of their children. And this is a critical lesson that every child should learn and it will determine how you function in society and how you function in school and in your career and in your relationships with one another. There's a major factor in our lives that acting and behaving the way we do a lot of times is because of some unresolved problems that we've had in our childhood or we have had, uh, had with our, uh, our parents and we are carrying them over into our life in which we're living right now. Or we allow, and I don't know how many times that I have seen how couples will bring their past with them into their marriage and they had unresolved things in their life and then they bring them things on their spouse and they bring them on their children and they don't know where in the world they're coming from. One of the things I've always noticed is that when I would uh, 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 do counseling with a young couple prior to marriage, I'm telling them that they're going to bring a suitcase with them. And when they bring this suitcase, they need to open it up and they need to unpack it. Get rid of some of those things in your life and don't bring them in that you may be able to cause problems in your marriage. A survey shows that people who get along with their parents have less stress in their life. Some of you are stressed out. And it's because of unresolved things that you may have in your life. Okay, preacher, you're saying that we should honor our father and our mother. How do you do it? How does God expect us 
to honor them. Well, it depends on what stage of life that you're in because it's going to vary. Let's start. Number one. Honor them as a child. Verse, uh, verse 1 of chapter 6 tells us, Children, you obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. God has placed your parents in authority over you. And he says to obey. Do what they say. Now listen to what he says. When you do what they say, he says, number one, it's right. Number two, things will go well with you. And number three, you may get to live longer. Amen? No, that's what the scripture says, that it may be well with thee, and you may live long upon the earth. As long as you're under their roof, you obey them. I mean, my gosh, guys, they're, they're the ones that's providing the food, the clothes, the shelter, the internet. And they have a right to call the shots. And when you're on your own, it'll be different. But the Bible says that you are to obey. Now, I struggle with that when, I, when I'm around some kids and they talk to their parents the way they do. I tell you, I've been biting my lip, and I have to walk away for some of this. It's as if that the children are leading and directing the parents. God help us to see the, the position that God's put you in, placed you in, the authority that you have as a parent. So number two. How can I obey my parents, or how can I honor my father and mother as a young person? By accepting and appreciating them. Hear me out. As you get older, you're going to start seeing that your father, when you were a child, was Superman. And somewhere along the line, he got a chink in his armor. You begin to see some faults and you begin to see some hang-ups that they have. It's important for you that you accept them in spite of their weaknesses that they have in their life. Heard a child say, I wish you wasn't my mother like they didn't have a choice. Well, let me tell you something, kids. They didn't have a choice either. So the reality of this is just this, that neither of you have a choice. So you're kind of stuck with each other. Did you catch that? That's why acceptance is one of the most vital things that young people need to come to in their life. First of all, how can, how can I have acceptance? You realize that God used them to bring you into this world. Your parents may have been excellent. Your parents may have been mediocre. And some of your parents may have been poor. But regardless, they gave you something on earth that no one else could give you. And they gave you life. And you owe them for that. Regardless of their parenting skills, God chose them to bring you into the world. The second thing is how you can accept them is by listening to them. This is hard, isn't it, sometimes? I want you to uh, 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 go to Proverbs with me and keep your finger there in Proverbs because i got about three places that I want you to look here with me. Proverbs 23 is where I want to start at. Proverbs 23, look in verse number 22. When it says that you listen to them, listen to what the Word of God says, children, young people. Hearken. Listen to your father that begot you. And despise not thy mother when she is old. It said to listen to them. Give them the courtesy and the respect of listening to them. Don't tune them out. But not only listen to them, but, uh, but it also includes forgiving them. Can I give you a fact of life? 
something that happens in the family. The fact is, the people that we love the most is the people sometimes that we hurt the most. Whether it's intentionally or whether it's unintentionally. You live long enough, someone in your family is going to hurt your feelings. They're going to hurt you. But families need to understand that they need to be built on forgiveness. That every family should. Because we hurt each other. We need to be able to say that I forgive. Today it's not popular to honor parents. Many are lying on the couch and blaming them for their uh, problems that they have in their life. Look in Proverbs 20. Look in verse number 20. What it says. Whosoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure darkness. Did you notice that? When we have unforgiveness in our life, it creates bitterness. And I know of nothing that actually has more uh, uh, power in a person's life than bitterness because it is self-destructive. Not even in their home. Some of us are still being controlled by the bitterness of our childhood or of some incident in our childhood. We honor our parents by forgiving them for what they did wrong and focus on what they did right. Listen to this verse of scripture. It's found in Deuteronomy 26, 11. Be grateful for the things that the Lord has given you and your family. Are you, are you thankful for that? And the next thing, young people, that you need to do, you need to appreciate the effort that your mom and dad are putting forth as parents. Parenting is tough. Parenting is tough and it is time demanding and it is energy draining. Have you, can I get an amen on that? Amen. Yes, it is. As a parent, I appreciate what my parents did with seven kids. I'm still amazed at that. We had a one, two, three, four, five, five or six room house and there was seven of us in there. And, and I look at that and I wonder how in the world I had a time corralling three and teaching three. But young people, listen to me. I wonder how much easier it would have been for your mom and dad if they didn't have any kids. <laughs> how much easier would life be? That's why you need to appreciate their sacrifice that they're making. Having kids is expensive. You notice that was only fathers. The economics of having a child today is staggering. I believe that this is wrong, but it is estimated that it cost $250,000 to raise a child from infancy to maturity. $250,000. Tina, we lost three quarters of a million dollars. And what do we have to show for it? A used camper. Three quarters of a million dollars. Someone said a father is a man who has a billfold full of pictures that he used to fill with money. There was an old fellow that was getting ready to have his picture made for the directory of the church. And he said, is this where I come? And they said, yes. He said, well, get my kids and tell them to stick their hands in my pocket. <laughs> so this picture will look natural. <laughs> but listen to me. 
When a couple chooses to have children, listen, they are choosing to do without some things. You appreciate them for their sacrifice that they're making for you. Look in Proverbs 23. Once again, verse, well, in 22, you'll notice it says, hearken unto that father. But it says, don't despise what they are doing here. How do I honor my father and my mother when I get to be an adult my age? As I told you, that verse of scripture that we started with here, it had no time limits and it had no age limits. It didn't say that you honor your parents while you're young, but when you get older, you don't have to. How do you do it as an adult? You affirm them and you don't abandon them. Now, the word affirm means that you encourage them and that you give them emotional support that they need. I'm going to tell you, the older I get, uh, emotional support seems like it's worth, more, it's worth more than gold. Some of us have gone through this already and some are in the process of going through it. But every one of you will go through this at some time or another in your life with your parents if they don't die first. For many parents, the older they get, the less respect that they get. The friends that they had, the ones that used to affirm them, have all started dying off. Their children, their grown children are becoming so busy with their own families that they end up leading lonely lives. Kids, your parents have a great need. Parents have a need to know that they made some kind of a positive contribution in your life. The Bible says that we are to value and to treasure and to hold in high esteem our aged parents. Look with me in Proverbs 3, and this is the last place I want you to look in Proverbs. Look in Proverbs 3 in verse number 27. Proverbs 3, 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of of your hand to do it. To do it. Do the right thing. While you've got time to do it, you need to be doing the right thing. Let me, let me tell you, all the flowers in the world at their funeral will not do them one bit of good. The flowers at the funeral are only going to benefit you. Not them. And if you're going to give them flowers, do it while they're alive. Right, Junior? Amen. Amen. Junior's 97-year-old mother just and Brenda's mother just passed away here recently. And he said, Mike, will you do me a favor? And he said, will you do the song, Just a Rose? We'll do. It's all. Don't need no spray of flowers. I, uh, and I'm going to tell you, if you need to give that flower today, then you need to do it now while you can do it. Affirming them means listening to them. Even if you don't follow their counsel, it is good for you and courteous and respectful to ask it and to listen to it. Guys, we've got good examples in the Word of God of people who were asking of the advice of older people. Who was it that Moses talked to when he needed an answer in his life? Remember that he went to Jethro, his father-in-law? 
Do you remember in the book of Ruth, what Ruth, uh, when she wanted to get counsel, who did she go to? She went to Naomi, her mother-in-law, to get wisdom. The Bible says the way that we treat elderly parents is a demonstration of the kind of faith we have. Here's the last place I want you to look. I want you to go to 1 Timothy. And I want you to look in chapter 5 and beginning in verse number 8. 1 Timothy 5 and verse number 8. If any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his household, he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Did you catch that? I, I, Literally, that word infidel means that you're a heathen. You're not a Christian. He says, you may talk the talk, but he says, your actions are not meeting to what the criteria of what a Christian is. And you care for those of your home. There is a tragedy in our society today where busy families are abandoning the elderly. And they end up dying alone. Amen. The Bible teaches when they get too old to care for themselves. Guys, it's not the government's responsibility. It's ours. Can I give you a family cycle? There is a cycle of the family as time rolls on, you're going to see happen. The roles are going to get reversed. There was a point in your life when your parents fed you, where they bathed you, and when they cared for you. And as you both grow older, you're going to notice something's going to happen. Those roles are going to be reversed. Now it may be that you may need to feed them, to bathe them, to care for them. Some of you are facing those issues right now and they're tough, aren't they? And many of you are going to have to make decisions on health care and, and make it maybe a nurse, whatever the case may be. I was there. I grew up very respectful of my parents and there were certain things that I would never do. I would never, just never do. But I remember when my mom, we were waiting for the hospice to come. And mom uh, couldn't control herself. I had to put her in the shower by herself. I'd never seen my mama like that. But I ask for the grace of God Amen. to be able to do for her. And the bottom line was that afterwards I was not ashamed. I was not embarrassed because I was doing what I thought was the right and the proper thing to do. Do you know what I find interesting about this whole subject and this whole message? I felt that it's interesting that when Jesus was dying on the cross and he was carrying the sins of the world on his shoulder, one of the things that he did not forget was the care of of his aged mother. Jesus said, Jesus made seven statements from the cross. And one of those statements that he made from the cross was that he looked down at the Apostle John and he says, Take care of my mother when I am gone. He did not forget. To provide. Now parents, I'm going to tell you, how many of you uh, want your children to honor you? Four, five, six. Rest of them don't give a rip. 
Okay. Can I give you a suggestion? If you want your children to honor you, be honorable. Be honorable. Give them a reason to honor you. As a Christian parent, my number one goal in life was to ensure that my kids come to know Jesus Christ when they were old enough to understand. I want to know as a parent that my children, everyone, know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and they have made a commitment to Him not by coercion but they made the decision themselves. I'm going to tell you, as a parent, I could not rest easy till I was sure that all of my children were in the fold. Because I didn't know when I was going to leave here. But before I leave here, I want them to know that I'm going to see them again. Amen. And all of them's there. I worried about Todd. <laughs> But he came around. Now I got Brother Christian. And also I got that little way back there in the back, old Brother Zeke. Got two more now. And let me tell you something. I've already started praying for it. I've already started working for it. And I'm going to tell you, I pray that God lets me live so it comes to pass before I leave. That they'll be there. Amen. I'm blessed. My grandson is, I meant to tell you to pray for him. My grandson is preaching a message over in uh, East Marion, North Carolina, at East Marion Baptist Church this morning. Heart leaps for joy. <coughs> Let one go down and another one come up. Amen. 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 Some of you. Maybe didn't live in the best environment of growing up. Maybe you did experience abuse. Maybe you're having trouble yet of even thinking about honoring them because of the neglect that you experienced. But I want you to hear me what your heavenly father says. The Lord gave this to you this morning. Whosoever offends my little ones... It would be better that a millstone be tied around their neck and to be cast into the depths of hell. God's looking out for you. He's looking out for you. You may feel like because that dad checked out, mom checked out. Your heavenly father cares about you. The Bible says that when my father forsake me and my mother forsake me, that God did not forsake me. And I'm going to tell you something right now. This earthly family that we have is only going to last for a period of time. There's not going to be a permanency in heaven for our family. Because when we get to heaven, we're going to be the family of God. Which will be eternal forever. And you know what? He wants you to be a part of that family. He wants you to be one of those children that come. Maybe there's reason that you have this bitterness or this hardship. Maybe, maybe even in your marriage or even how you relate to your children or you relate to other people. is because of the unresolved issues that you had in your life. That you've not got, I'm going to tell you, you're not going to do and be able to get past them until you deal with them. And God wants to help you to get past your past and enjoy, as Christy says, your life. For I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. 
Yes. Experience that today in Christ.